12 things that ruin a first impression immediately. Scientists have proven that we form our first impression about someone within the first seven seconds of meeting them. And there are definitely certain factors that can instantly make or break it. Are you ready to find out what you should and shouldn't do in order to leave a good first impression on other people? Then keep on watching. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you'll always be the first to see all our new videos. Number 12. A weak handshake. This point couldn't be more important for anyone with an upcoming job interview. A flimsy handshake can be a real first impression killer. In his research, psychologist William F. Chaplin found that people with a weak handshake are instantly judged as being shy, anxious, uninterested, or even completely incompetent. That's definitely not how you want others to see you, is it? Another common mistake people make is holding someone's hand for too long. Awkward. If you're going to give the right impression of confidence and capability, remember to grip the other person's hand firmly and for no longer than two seconds. That'll put you on the road to success. Number 11. Keeping your hands in the wrong position. If you're ever sitting in front of a group of people, whether it be at a business meeting or some conference, you've got to be mindful of where you keep your hands. You can put them on your lap, but never keep them in your pockets because this gives the impression that you're hiding something. If you place your hands on the table, don't squeeze them too tightly or lay them flat with your palms down. This makes people feel like you want to control them. Also, don't forget about the role that culture plays here. While gently folding your hands on the table is totally okay in the Western world, this position is considered rude in Japan and India. Do your research on the customs and culture before you visit another country. This will help you avoid any uncomfortable situations. Number 10. Chewing gum. You've got to admit that it's incredibly annoying and distracting when you're talking to someone and they're chomping on a piece of gum. Put this irritating behavior into a formal situation or a first-time encounter with someone and it becomes even more inappropriate. Chewing on gum makes you look immature, self-centered, and somewhat lowbrow. So don't even think about it for a job interview. You want to show your best qualities, not your indifference towards your potential employer. On the flip side, a new study has found that in casual situations, people chewing gum are usually perceived as more friendly and approachable. So be careful with this one. It can either help or hurt you. Number 9. Avoiding eye contact. Eye contact has an unbelievably powerful influence on how we view someone. A 2007 study showed that people who maintain eye contact during a conversation are often seen as more confident, attentive, intelligent, and trustworthy. People that avoid eye contact, on the other hand, are viewed as less sincere, more anxious, and even unattractive. It doesn't mean you have to stare people down like a creep. Just don't be afraid to lock eyes with another person from time to time instead of constantly looking around, especially when you meet them for the first time. Number 8. Playing with your hair. Statistics show that women touch their hair up to 18 times a day. That's fine if you're fixing it in the mirror. But if you play with your hair while talking to someone, you could be sending them the wrong message. First off, they might think you're flirting with them. But more importantly, a person who toys with their hair during a conversation looks unconfident, anxious, and uncomfortable. Traits that are especially undesirable in official situations. And when playing with your hair becomes excessively repetitive, it can even be a sign of OCD. If you tend to do this when you're nervous, try to kick this habit. It'll do you and your hair a lot of good. Number 7. Picking the wrong conversation topics. In order to avoid the dreaded, awkward silence, a lot of people are ready to talk about anything with someone they've just met. But you never know what subjects can make someone feel uncomfortable. So it's better to play it safe and avoid the general taboo topics out there. They include health problems, money, religion, politics, or personal problems and complaints. Try not to focus the conversation only on yourself and your issues. That's what therapists are for. It's always a good idea to be attentive to your conversation partner. 
A good listener is always highly appreciated. Number six, invading someone's personal space. Just as there are certain lines you shouldn't cross when it comes to conversation topics, the same goes for personal space. Experts put it simply, the space between you and another person depends on your relationship and the situation. There's a certain distance for close friends and family, one for informal conversations and another for formal interactions. When it comes to meeting someone for the first time, keep a minimum of four feet between the two of you. If you stand too close to them, you may come off as aggressive. But if you stand too far away, you seem uninterested. Just try to find a happy medium and stick to it. Number five, making distracting noises. We've all been in a room with someone who constantly taps their foot or fingers or drums their pen on the desk. And if you do any of these things, you're not only annoying everyone, no offense, you're also giving them the wrong impression about you. Tapping can indicate nervousness, irritation, or impatience. People might even think that you're purposely trying to irritate others or draw attention to yourself. And while cracking your knuckles can help relieve stress, it's one of the most annoying sounds according to a survey by the New York Times. It can be nearly impossible to control nervous tapping, but you have to try, especially during important meetings or presentations. Number four, constantly checking your phone. In the age of social media and 24-7 access to the internet, we've become addicted to our gadgets. In fact, an Android app called Locket collected information and found that the average person checks their phone 110 times a day. Even if you're just checking the time on your screen, it comes off as extremely impolite when you do it during a conversation. The other person gets the impression that they're boring you and you seem to have better things to do. A study from the University of Essex showed that even just having one's phone on the table next to them reduces a conversation's quality and the participant's engagement. So leave it in your bag or in your pocket, period. Number three, forgetting people's names. Probably the most embarrassing thing you can do when you see someone is to forget their name. And it's especially humiliating if they remember yours. To steer clear of this awkward situation, get into the habit of immediately repeating someone's name after you've been introduced, like, Hi Anne, nice to meet you. Justifying this faux pas with excuses about having a bad memory or being terrible with names won't cut it. And when it does happen, just play it cool and try to avoid using phrases where you have to name the other person. That should do the trick. Number two, being late. While your best friend might kid you that you're always so fashionably late, there's nothing to joke about it when it comes to first impressions and being tardy. Running late to a meeting with people you don't know or have a formal relationship with will shed a guaranteed negative light on you. You'll seem like an unreliable and unorganized person that doesn't respect people enough to value their time. Nothing good about any of that. So if you don't want that mess to be the way people view you, don't be late. It's that easy. Leave your house in enough time so that you don't have to run to your meeting. You'll be all disheveled and unfocused, and that looks bad too. There are tons of online resources to learn better time management skills, so make use of them. Number one, the wrong attire. Whether we like it or not, people do judge a book by its cover. And remember, they do it within seven seconds of setting eyes on us. There's not much you can say within this time, which proves that a lot of assumptions people make are based purely off of looks. In fact, statistics claim that 55% of the first impression is based on appearance. What's more, studies show that your height, weight, hair color, and makeup can even influence the size of your paycheck. So if you're meeting someone for the very first time, again, especially in more formal situations, try to be conservative in your choice of clothing. Be polished and don't use heavy perfume or tons of makeup. You don't have to dress to the nines or anything, just look neat and well put together. What else do you think can ruin a first impression? Tell us in the comments section below. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family, they need to know how to leave a good impression too. Stay on the bright side of life and we'll see you soon. <laughs>